This is an introduction to assignment four. Exercise 4.1 will be to add an array to our code. So up until this point, we had been using fields, but now that we know about arrays, it makes sense to store the number of cans of each flavor in our can rack as an array. So we're going to go back and change the implementation. But of course, this implementation change should not have an effect on the code that's using can rack. So to create the array, we need to know how many elements is in the array. And of course, we could just say three because we know that's correct. But what we want to do is have something that, in case it changes, we don't have to go around and looking for a whole bunch of threes. So in this case, we're going to create an array. And its length will be the number of values in the enumerated type flavor. So there is the field that's of an array type that would be associated with your can rack. Now it's going to be uh, convenient to be able to iterate through or loop through or otherwise traverse that array. So depending on what information you're looking for, you might uh, want to do that a couple of different ways. So here are a couple of for each loops. This one loops through all of the numbers in the array, or each enumeral as a number. And this one loops through all of the strings, or that is to say all of the names associated with that array. So whereas this one is going to go from 0 to 2, this one is going to go from uh, regular to limit. All right, now uh, I'd like you to add a new method to CanRack called display CanRack. Uh, this comment here basically says that we're doing this for the simplicity of the exercise. In other words, normally we probably put this in a separate class, but uh, just to kind of keep things rolling and not to have to write too much uh, linkage code, uh, we're just going to put this in, in CanRack. Normally, we wouldn't do this. All right, so now that you've made that change to your implementation, you should remove anything uh, or comment out if you like to do it for historical purposes. Uh, but otherwise, uh, take out of your code anything that has to do with using instance variables instead of the array. So now go back to your vending machine, that is to say your main method, and add code. So each time they purchase a soda, they then have the option of going back and purchasing another one in the same way that a vending machine works. Now you should be able to run your vending machine and run out of sodas. And the question is, are you getting the appropriate messages when that happens? All right, exercise 4.2 is to mo further modify your vending machine so that instead of typing in like 3.5 for 35 cents, or even 0.35, you type in the names of the coins, quarter, nickel, dime, half dollar. Now this will mean that you'll need to locate coin.cs in a separate project and bring that into your vending machine project. Don't forget to change the namespace appropriately, however you choose to do that. And also add code that would allow the human user to select a particular flavor of soda. And finally, optionally, we have exercise 4.3, adding command line arguments and refactoring. Okay, so now what we want to be able to do is allow users to use the command line to put in uh, an order, eff effectively, for a soda. So the arguments themselves would be strings representing the flavor names and the coin names. So in the example here, where Vind is my executable, I put in a quarter and a dime and ask for an orange soda. Now notice the order is not specified, so you should be able to put that in any order. Specify the flavor first, and then put in the money, or in fact put in some of the money, and then a flavor, and then the rest of the money. Okay, remember that .NET Core projects that produce a DLL, that DLL is only going to be able to be run using the .NET command, so just keep that in mind as you uh, test your code. And you might want to use the open in terminal command to allow you to bring up something that operates like a command window from within Visual Studio. And then finally, this is a good opportunity for us to improve our code by doing a little refactoring. So you can use extract method or whatever you like to break your main method down into smaller chunks that are easier to immediately verify and debug and just, in fact, more modular. Now, some of you have already done this, so I'm not asking for you to re-refactor your code. And in fact, this is an optional exercise anyway. So if you've already accomplished this, then there's nothing more to do. So of course, we would expect a lot of variability in an exercise such as this. So it should be interesting to see what you come up with.
Keep in mind that you may want to make private methods out of some of the code that's in main, and you keep that private method in your program class, or you might want to make whole new classes. As always, as long as you stick to the supplied specifications for the class, everything should work together. And that's the introduction to Assignment 4.